life processes lecture number 3 in this lecture we will be learning about the circulatory system of our body and its working mechanism so here we will be learning about another important life process known as transportation so coming to the introductory part of this lecture in humans the circulatory system transports various materials throughout the body and is composed of three things mainly the heart the blood and the blood vessels so let's learn about the heart the heart is known as the pumping station of our body its function is to pump blood to the various parts of the body it also collects the blood from all the parts of our body so let us look at the anatomy of the heart this is how the heart looks when cut the human heart has four chambers two of which are called atria which are the above ones and the bottom two ones are called as the ventricles the right half of the heart receives deoxygenated blood whereas the left half receives oxygenated blood the atria are the upper segments of the heart the ventricles are the lower segments of the heart ventricular walls are much thicker than the atrial walls remember that the arteries carry blood from the heart to different parts of the body whereas the veins deliver the blood back to the heart arteries are connected to the veins by thin capillaries where in materials are exchanged between the blood and the cells humans show double circulation and complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood coming to arteries the blood vessels which carry blood away from the heart to various organs of the body is known as the artery veins the blood vessel which collects blood from different organs to the body and brings it back to the heart these are the veins The schematic of the transport system has been shown below. Note that artery carries the pure blood and veins carry the impure blood. Now let us look at the working mechanism of the transport system. Impure blood from various parts of the bo body enters the heart through the veins. Then the heart pumps this impure blood to the lungs for purification. through the pulmonary artery then the purified blood reenters the heart from through the pulmonary veins this pure blood is pumped to the body by the heart through the artery called as aorta which is the largest artery in the human body just ignore all the walls displayed in the diagram 
because you will be learning about these in detail in your class 12. Coming to platelets. Now, usually we might come across a case where we experience a cut or a leak in the parts of our body. In such a case, there would be a loss of blood. So to avoid an excess loss of blood, our body has developed an inbuilt maintenance mechanism through which it can patch up these leaks or cuts. This process of patching up is called as clotting. The process of clotting is accomplished due to the presence of platelets in the blood. Blood platelets are essential for clotting of blood at the place of injury and thus prevent blood loss. So let us learn about lymph. These are another type of fluid also involved in the transportation. This is called a lymph or a tissue fluid. Lymphatic system consists of lymph, lymph nodes, lymphatic capillaries and lymph vessels which drain into larger veins. Now let's have a look at the lymphatic system. This is just to get an idea. You need not remember this. Now let us learn about the transportation and plants. In plants, water is transported through the xylem tissue from the roots to the aerial parts of the plants. Root pressure and transpiration pull are the major forces involved in pulling the water up the xylem. Excretion in human beings. This is the ex excretory system in a human. During excretion, the harmful metabolic nitrogenous waste are gen generated are removed out of the body. In humans, a pair of kidneys and a pair of ureters, urinary bladder and urethra constitute the excretory system. Now let us learn about the nephron. Nephrons are the basic filtration units of a kidney. They carry out filtration, selective reabsorption and tubular secretion to form urine in kidney which is then passed out through the urethra via the ureters and the urinary bladder. Coming to the summary, we expect the student to read it on their own. Enough time has been given. Please have a look.
the end. Thank you.